All right, today's video, we're talking about 20 years of underrated fat loss lessons in about 45 minutes. If you're watching on the channel, welcome back. If you're on the podcast, I appreciate you listening. Today, I wanna walk through my list of all the things, at least as much as I can fit into 45 minutes, that I've learned since I started working out about 20, 25 years ago. I became a personal trainer 20 years ago and there's been so many lessons I've learned, so many mistakes I've made. I mean, you name the mistake, I've probably made it. And I wanna help you avoid those mistakes, learn what to do differently, and give you some things that are just really underrated when it comes to transforming your body. The first thing that I wanna talk about is something called identity design. And it's a really simple concept. It's not necessarily always easy to implement, but once you understand this, you'll start to paint a better picture or at least a clearer picture of how to literally wipe the slate clean and start to build something sustainable, something that stands the test of time. Because the truth is, everybody could get abs for a day and call themselves elite, call themselves fit, and struggle to get there, fight to get there, do unhealthy things to get there, and call themselves ripped, call themselves fit. But the real test to whether or not your fitness program is built the right way is does it stand the test of time? And I think one of the biggest reasons why most, fan, most, most plans end up failing, end up burning out, most people struggle to maintain fitness is because their identity is still attached to the person who's not fit. The version of themselves who would prefer to do the things that give them short-term pleasure and long-term pain versus short-term uncomfortable situations with long-term pleasure and ROI. This identity design concept <clears throat> really became apparent when I started working with people online. And I was no longer in the gym, you know, just trying to burn through people every 45 minutes, you know, it was kind of a rat race. And it was one person stacked on top of the other because there's only so much time in a day. And I really didn't get a, a great chance to connect with people on a personal level until I moved my business online and I started doing more internal work with people or more mindset coaching, more spiritual coaching, right? Talking about things outside of just fitness that fitness has a big impact on. You know, I realized that physical health is just one piece to the equation. You know, I started fitness and I started working out in response to an abusive childhood. You know, I was raised in an alcoholic home, uh, an emotionally abusive home, a physically abusive home, and a home where... I went through a lot of turmoil and there was a lot of trauma, both for me and my five other siblings. I was the oldest of six. And fitness was a, a refuge for me. It was a sanctuary. It was like a place to get out of the craziness. But what I realized is even as I got older, I was still loving fitness, but my identity was still trapped around the kid who was a victim, right? It was still trapped around the person who was never ripped, was never muscular, was never confident, had a lot of insecurity. And fitness wasn't going to take care of all that. At least the physical side of fitness wasn't going to take care of all that. I needed to get my identity dialed in. I needed to get the spiritual, the emotional, and the mental identity part of my life dialed in. That changed the game for me when I started working on it myself and working on it with people in my coaching business and realizing, hey, you don't have to be the person that is in your current chapter, right? You don't have to be the person who's overweight. You, you know, you don't have to be the person who struggles with eating. Like people talk about themselves and they don't even hear what they're saying. They'll be like, yeah, I, I, I'll never have abs or like, I'm not the guy who, you know, can control his, his alcohol or I'm not the guy who can do that. Like that's for people with more discipline. And you're just speaking those things into existence when you could literally change who you are. You don't have to be stuck. And that just comes down to two things. Number one, making a decision, right? You decide, hey, I'm going to be someone different. I'm going to literally evolve my identity into something else and then writing new stories. So you have to write new stories mentally around what you are capable of, like what can you do? And the answer is you're capable of so much more. And once you start to shift your identity, all of a sudden the behaviors become easy. You know, I tell people all the time, you get your identity dialed in, you get your spiritual health, your mental health on a better place or in a better place. The fitness side, man, it gets so easy. Fitness is actually really simple at the end of the day. It's one of the easiest concepts to understand really once you break it down. It's not rocket science, but we make it complicated because our identities are wrapped up in complex, insecure, 
you know, lacking discipline, uh, all these traumas that we've never actually closed the loop on. Like all these things contribute to the complexity that we feel around fitness. So this is a big topic. I'm starting with a huge one here, but we have to get our identity dialed into the person who we want to be, which leads me to point number two, because then the next question, if you're thinking and you're taking notes at home is like, well, okay, that makes sense, I guess, <laughs> but how do I do that? Right? Like, how do I start getting into a new identity? Like, do I change my name? Like, social security number? Like, how does this work? And the answer is no, you just have to start by getting into character. Now, I'm a huge movie buff, right? I love going to the movies. I love watching every decent movie that comes out, even bad movies I'll, I'll, I'll watch. Uh, and, you know, I, I just love the movies. And I really admire great actors who really just get into the role on a deep level that they're playing on the screen. Daniel Day-Lewis is one of my favorite actors, and he's famous for only doing a few movies. Like, he just doesn't do a lot of volume, but when he does a movie, oh my gosh, he goes all in on the role. And leading up to filming the movie, he becomes the person that he's going to play. Like, he literally becomes the person. And what this does is when he's on screen, it allows him to be the person at a deeper level. Like, his acting becomes so real that you feel like you're watching someone who is literally the person who's the character, right? It's not an actor playing the character, it is the character. So I call this getting into character uh, because at the end of the day, we can start to play the version of ourselves that we wanna be before we actually get the result. So think about it like this. If you're someone who's like, hey, man, I gotta take better care of my body, I wanna lose body fat, I wanna rid myself of the bad habits, I wanna start doing the right habits, I wanna sleep better, I wanna eat better, I wanna be nicer to my kids, nicer to my spouse, I just wanna be a better, happier person. Well, you can start to play that person and get into character before you actually see the results show up. And the best thing to do is start asking yourself, what would that future version of me or that future identity do in these situations? You know, it could be something as silly as when you're out to eat, like what would that version of me order at a restaurant, like let me start just pretending to be that person by doing the things that that person would do right now before the result shows up, before you're ripped, before you're muscular, before you're mentally dialed in, before you're spiritually connected like and you're feeling great again, you start doing those things and here's the magic. The magic happens because when you get into character, all of a sudden the habits and routines rapidly improve and it doesn't feel as hard because you're playing someone else for now until you permanently shift and become that person. And once again, this is a lesson I've learned over the last 20 years. You know, if I want something, especially with my physical fitness, well, I need to start making decisions based off of the future version of me. Like, what am I, what am I headed towards? Because the guy right now in the shoes I'm in today, overweight or you know, out of shape or whatever, maybe like some of you watching, the decisions I make aren't great. You know, that's why I'm here, obviously. So let me start by getting into character. Let me prepare for the role that I am ultimately going to play in a permanent way very soon. But before those results get there, let me start getting into character now. Now, lesson number three, as we head deeper into this discussion today about underrated lessons from the last 20 years, you know, I think it's also important to have little rules that we can have in our day to help us avoid making terrible decisions that lead to more terrible decisions. The easiest one that I've ever implemented, that I've ever created, that I've ever utilized, both in my life and in our clients' lives, is what's called the 10-minute rule. And the 10-minute rule is simply this. When you know you need to do something but you don't feel like doing it, you'd rather do other things that aren't the right things, do the right thing for 10 minutes. And that could be a number of things. That could be working out, that could be creating a healthy meal, that could be going to bed at the right time, that could be drinking enough water, going for a walk, the list goes on and on. All the things that obviously contribute to fat loss and body transformation and mental health, you don't feel like doing it. And the reason why you don't feel like doing it is because in your mind, it feels like climbing Mount Everest. We take a small task and we exaggerate the difficulty in our own story, right? We think, man, you know, cooking chicken, cooking up a steak, going to do a workout, man, that feels like I have to climb Mount Everest right now. And we put that story in our head so we go, nah, I don't want to do it because it's too inconvenient. I'd rather go 
you know, relax. I'd rather go do something productive, quote unquote. I'd rather go have a drink. You know, the whole list goes on and on. So we create that idea that it's this massive task. So what the 10 minute rule does is it shrinks the task down to a very bite-sized chunk, little bite-sized chunk that we then go accomplish. And we go, wow, that was easy. And all of a sudden it tricks our emotional brain into going, oh, it's not that hard. So my 45 minute workout or my 30 minute workout that I did 10 minutes of was really easy. 10 minutes went by in a blink. I could do another 30 minutes. I could do another 20 minutes, no problem. And you accomplish something. Now that accomplishment gives you a massive amount of momentum, self-belief and happiness and fulfillment. All those emotions come together and they build what? Motivation and discipline because you want more of that, right? You like that feeling of accomplishment. You like believing in yourself, but you have to have little rules in place that leads you to reaching that emotional state so then you want more of it. So these are things that nobody wants to talk about, right? So I said underrated fat loss advice because, dude, to be honest, if you wanna learn how to just count macros and do bicep curls and shoulder presses and do cardio, like there's books, I've written books, I've written articles, I mean, you know, there's, there's a million resources out there, but part of what we do with the true transformation is we give you all the things that you actually need, right? We, we want to create a sanctuary for you, a safe place, a clean slate and build real sustainability, real, real permanent transformation. And these are the things you have to have at your toolbox. You know, it's not enough to just be like, Hey, I'm going to eat more protein. Like, yeah, okay, cool. Like do that for sure. But that's not really what you're after. You're after the stuff that will lead to eating more protein or will lead to having abs, but it's all the stuff that will impact all parts of your life, right? These rules can be applied to everything. A tough conversation, have it for 10 minutes. By the time 10 minutes is up, you're going to be like, what was I so worried about? Let's just get through this whole thing. You know, put the dishes away for 10 minutes. I always joke around. I hate putting the dishes away, but I do it for 10 minutes. And guess what? It takes eight minutes to put the dishes away. So the 10 minute rule knocks out the whole task. If you're interested, by the way, in learning about how we set up plans, like if you actually want fat loss advice, the 3M action guide is your best bet. It's free. You can go to the link in the description of this video. You can download a copy for yourself. There's no charge. Just download it, start using it. Right. But what we charge for is actual coaching, actual mentorship, spiritual, mental, physical health, all wrapped in, into one because you can't have one without the others. You have to have them all together. And so we want to get you on the right path at least. So do, go do that. And then you know, we'll start to connect more and we can see if we're a mutual fit and if we can take you on, we will, right? So let's keep this going. There's, there's a lot more. Um, there's another rule that I think you'll really like, and I haven't talked about this one a lot, but it's called the time machine rule. It's kind of a interesting thing. I actually discovered this one with being a dad, okay? Because being a dad comes with so many amazing things. I have two little boys. The time of filming of this video, they're nine and eight. They're 18 months apart. Sports fanatics, just crazy kids. They're like my best little buddies. They love all the stuff I do except 10 times more. So it's heaven for me, hell for my wife. But at the end of the day, um, it is not just amazing all the time, right? The truth is there's times where I'm very impatient. There's times where I lose my cool. There's times where I flip out. There's times where, you know, the stress of being a dad leads me to want to do awful things for myself, right? Drink too much, eat crappy food, watch, you know, s s nasty stuff online. Like, you know, like all the stuff we as men struggle with, we allow these vices to be like the easy scapegoat to relieve our stress, okay? So anyway, the time machine rule was discovered through being a dad because there's many moments that I find myself losing my patience and kind of being annoyed with my kids at times and going, man, like, I just wanna disappear. You know, I wanna not be present. I wanna go veg out on my phone and I don't wanna go throw the baseball around because I've had a long day. But the time machine rules this. If you could take, if you, if you could imagine for a second that you take a time machine to that very moment that you're in right now, what would be the decision you would make, right? What would be the decision you would make to make sure that the future and the results you want happens, right? Because think about it as a dad, you know, you take a time machine back to that moment where you're about ready to lose your cool. And you think, man, if I lost my cool, that's going to damage my relationship with my son. In that moment, it might not be massive damage, but it will create damage. Even if it's a tiny amount, that's more than I want to do. 
So the time machine rule, I have an opportunity right now to rewrite history, rewrite the story right now. Now this can apply to your health and fitness too. Because think about it, if it's late at night, you've had a long day, you've been great. You've done your walk, your steps, you've done your workout, you hit your calories and you're just going, man, I'm on a mission to transform my body, my mental health. But what I really want right now is I wanna crush a gallon of ice cream. <laughs> like that's just what I want, I've had a long day. Dude, you took a time machine, okay? You're here now, you have the opportunity to make the right call because you know, deep down inside, you're gonna wake up tomorrow and you're gonna regret the ice cream. It wasn't the time or place. There's a time and place for ice cream, for sure. But in that moment, you know it's not. It's not the right time, it's not the right place. So you have to make the decision. You wanna make the decision that will impact your future results in a positive way. So the time machine rule is a reminder more than anything to go, hey, I have this moment right now to rewrite the story that happens from here on out. What am I gonna do? And it's a powerful exercise because, yeah, we don't really have a time machine. But if you can imagine taking one back and that's where you are, that's why you're here right now is you had that opportunity, it can be a powerful exercise to get you on the right path. Speaking of the right path, at the end of the day, fitness, as I said, becomes easy. When you have your mental health, your spiritual health, and you have routines around those things, right? I see someone who's struggling with their body. More times than not, they're struggling with their mental health too. They're struggling with depression. They're struggling with stress and anxiety, fear, you know, overworked. Um, they're feeling uh, you know, unsatisfied with life. They're worried that they're not doing enough. They're worried that things aren't gonna work out, so they turn to food they turn to lack of exercise, TV, Netflix, right? All the things that are at our disposal. So let me make fitness easy for you. One of the biggest lessons I've learned, and it's highly underrated, is that simple is always the best option. Simple, all right? There's a lot of complicated stuff out there. There's CrossFit, there's 75 Hard. These things have a time and place. But for me, I always wanna have a foundation that is set on simple principles, systems, that I can rely on from now until the day I'm gone, that I can also teach to other people very, very easily. And that system for us is called the 3M system, movement, muscle, meals. Those are the three things that you have to dial in. No matter what your goals are with fitness, even if it's building muscle, even if it's running a marathon, even if it's doing a high rocks or a Spartan race, or if it's just seeing your abs for the first time and you want to lose body fat, Movement, muscle, meals. Those are the three areas that you need to pay attention to. Movement, you need to have strategies in place to move enough throughout your day. Muscle, you need to do workouts that at least maintain the muscle that you have. And that can be done through body weight, dumbbells, bands, TRX, a full gym, a fancy gym, barbells, all the crazy stuff. Depends on you, depends on your preference, but the principle of training to maintain and build a little bit of muscle and strength is a vital part of the process. And then of course there's meals. And it's really simple, calories, protein. And do you need to track your calories all the time? No. You need to track it enough to be able to eyeball your portions and know what amounts are going in your body just by looking at food. And this for some people takes a week, some people takes three weeks, some people it takes years. Most of our clients pick up on this stuff within 30 days. So our systems allow for quick adaptation to what amounts look like what, so they can just eyeball things. And then you can learn how to eat anywhere, any restaurant, any 7-Eleven, any five-star restaurant, on a plane, doesn't matter where you are, you know what you need to eat and how much to eat to hit your goals. And we teach you how to enjoy it, right? That's the most important thing. You, you gotta wake up every day excited to at least eat one thing that you like, do one part of your workout that you like, and do something movement-wise that's enjoyable. Like when you have those things Man, your mental health just takes a whole nother level. Like you just look forward to the stuff that's gonna be good for you. As we wrap things up, um, you know, there's, there's a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, the last one, and, and I'll just tell you this because this is really underrated when it comes to understanding how fast you're gonna lose fat. And by the way, if you enjoyed these so far, if these were beneficial, like the video, subscribe to the podcast if you're listening to the podcast. Um, and leave me a comment. What was the most valuable piece so far? Like which one resonated with you? And did I miss anything? Do you disagree with anything? Feel free to disagree. Feel free to let me know why you disagree. I'd love to have a discussion 
um, with you. So the last one, I'll, and I'll break this down really easily, is the toilet paper analogy. The toilet paper analogy is how I teach clients what to expect when it comes to fat loss. Because look, fat loss takes time. Weight loss can happen relatively quickly, but fat loss takes time. And it takes time because it's science. It's, there's only so much we can do, unless you've got liposuction, right? And you literally had a doctor put you to sleep, cut you open and suck out the fat. Losing fat is a scientific process. And so we know this because we've seen it happen millions and millions of times. The body has to be in what's called a calorie deficit, all right? You have to be burning more energy than you eat from food. So what that then does to the body is the body then goes, hey, I gotta turn to body fat for energy. And since this is all measurable, right? We call it, we call it calories. That's how we measure energy in food and energy in the body. Calories, unit of measurement for energy, there's a certain amount that has to be utilized or at least needed to be utilized to burn fat. In this case, it's around 3,500 calories to burn one pound of fat. Anyway, without getting too crazy into the science, the toilet paper analogy is simply this. You use the bathroom and you install a new you know, roll of toilet paper one day. Having two boys in my house, toilet paper just disappears. But nonetheless, you add two dogs to the mix too, it gets pretty, pretty wild. But toilet paper analogy is you start with a fresh roll of toilet paper. Man, there's so much toilet paper on that roll. And then, you know, every day when you use the bathroom, you don't really pay attention to the toilet paper and it kind of feels the same. Like you see the toilet paper, like, yep, yep, there's a lot of toilet paper. You just kind of use a little bit day by day, day by day. Weeks go by and all of a sudden you go to use the bathroom one day and you pull the last piece of toilet paper and you're like, how'd that happen? <laughs> There's no toilet paper left. It's because this is exactly how fat loss works. You look at yourself in the mirror every single day, multiple times a day and you go, nothing's happening guys. I'm not losing fat. Sure, the scale is coming down, but I don't look any different. And there's days where the scale goes up even though I do all the right things. And sometimes it goes up every day for a week and I'm like, I'm doing the right things. There's a lot going on underneath the hood of your body. But I can promise you this, if you're in a calorie deficit and you stay in a calorie deficit for an extended period of time, you are losing body fat. And one day, and I don't know what day that's gonna be, might be a Tuesday, might be a Wednesday, might be a Friday, who knows? You're gonna look in the mirror or you're gonna take a progress picture and you're gonna go, holy, crap, the toilet paper is gone. I lost so much fat. And it seems sometimes like it happens overnight. And this is the analogy you have to remember is that you're paying such close attention, especially when you start to the changes your body's seemingly not making, right? But if you just stick to the process, if you dr just trust the behaviors and you lean into the behaviors that fill you up emotionally, spiritually, physically, and mentally, the walks, the study time, the quiet time, the meditation, the workouts, the healthy food, the good sleep, the water, you just do those things on repeat and you learn to enjoy them and they become a very important part of your, your routine, the fat loss takes care of itself and you won't even realize it until one day you look and go, oh my gosh, I've changed. That's the toilet paper analogy. It's an underrated lesson that I would highly recommend remembering, writing down, and honestly, revisiting on a regular basis. So we're gonna wrap up today's video with that. Hope you got a lot out of this. Make sure you've taken notes, go wet back, watch it again. Save this one, share it with someone else that might need this advice. And hey, like I said before, um, if you want a starting action plan, well, that's what the 3M action plan is for. It's to get you on the right path with dialing in your body, changing how you look, feel, and perform. Just check that out, the links are below. If you're interested in our true transformation system, and you want to pull all the things together, the mental, the physical, the spiritual, all that together in a holistic plan coaching system that will dial all parts of your life in right now. You can check out the link below. We have an opportunity for you to apply for that. If you just enjoyed the video and you want more, like it, subscribe to the channel, let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you in the next one. Life moves fast, make it count. Peace.